What is going on, IF Warriors? Today we're going to talk about a new study that further continues to push the uh, the the notion that protein is incredibly important when mixed with intermittent fasting so that you are optimizing your fat loss visceral fat loss which is inside of the stomach around the organs as well as subcutaneous fat which is all of the fat that's right below the skin so without any further ado let's jump right into it now this study was published in the 28th of may uh, of this year in the journal of nature communications by Alex E. Moore and colleagues. Now, what did this study do exactly? They had 20 people within an intermittent fasting and protein pacing group, and they had a caloric restriction group, which had about 20 people as well. Now, there was a mixture of uh, women and men in both of these groups, but also they were overweight slash obese. So one thing that you have to realize when it comes to studies is certain things may work for those who are lean that don't work for those who are overweight and vice versa. So it is important to understand who the subjects are and what their characteristics are biologically to see if it matches your characteristics as well. So if you're somebody who is trying to lose weight and you are overweight or you might be obese, uh, these, uh, these subjects are more in line with, uh, with yourself. So this can actually help give you an idea of what may help you as well, as opposed to just like a bunch of athletic people trying to lose weight that might not apply to your biology. So now what's the dynamic between the two? What makes them so different in terms of the groups? So the intermittent fasting group ends up consuming more protein than the caloric restriction group. Further emphasizing what I've always mentioned on this channel is the power of increasing your protein intake. However, with protein pacing, it also allows for you to eat protein in intervals, right? So within your eating window, you are splitting your protein intake. So instead of eating your protein all in one shot, you're eating your protein like 20 grams here, uh, 15 grams there, uh, 20 grams there, and you're spreading it out right but you're doing it within your intermittent fasting window now the caloric restriction group they have higher uh fat intake and higher carbohydrate intake but they have a much lower protein intake now keep in mind although the protein intake is higher in the intermittent fasting uh group and intermittent fasting and protein pacing group the total calorie energy uh consumption is the same as well as the total energy expenditure in terms of exercise and uh, non-activity thermogenesis is all the same between both groups with all of that being the same with a mixture of men and women of uh between the intermittent fasting and protein pacing group and the caloric restriction group we still saw that there was significantly more not by a little bit by a lot significantly more weight loss in the intermittent fasting and protein pacing group visceral fat loss uh abdominal fat loss so that's the belly region all of that was reduced significantly more in the intermittent fasting uh slash protein pacing group now what does this even mean what are we getting out of this well if calories are equated for if energy expenditure is equated for then clearly protein is an axiom that if you add it to whatever you're doing diet wise it will definitely enhance it and optimize it i've said this so many times on this channel that the most important macronutrient for weight loss and for muscle building and all of those different things is protein protein is much more powerful than fats uh, protein is much more powerful than carbohydrates i know that a lot of people get bogged down on increasing their fat intake because that helps with continuously being in this uh, uh ketogenic state which that can definitely help if you're trying to be in in ketosis in a, on a consistent basis i completely understand that but what i'm trying to say here is that you may be doing something that provides a certain level of consistency in terms of the ketosis and using that uh, body fat turning it into ketones and, and continue and having that be continuous 
but you may not be losing the most fat possible because you still could be in that process but slowly losing fat as opposed to in this process where you're using protein you're increasing your protein intake amongst all of your macronutrients and that is accelerating the fat loss because protein the more protein you have the more it, it helps accelerate fat loss remember protein is the most metabolically active or met, uh, the most thermal thermic has the highest thermic effect and creates the most metabolically active reaction uh, to consuming food. So if you consume protein, 30% of that protein that you consumed will be used just to break down that protein that you consume. A uh, 30% of the, the calories that are coming from that protein as opposed to all the other macronutrients where with carbohydrates is about 15% and with fats is about 5%, right? Five to 10%. So it's very, very small in comparison to protein. Why is that? Because protein just, there's so many things that it does in your body that your body and your body uses it for so many different things that it, it's absorbing all of that stuff. And because of that, it needs a higher thermic effect. And that's why protein is so powerful. Why it's one of the reasons that it's so powerful. On top of that, it is the building blocks uh, for muscle tissue. So the more you increase your muscle because you're consuming the protein, the more you're actually combating your metabolic rate slowdown that inevitably takes place when you start to lose weight. Because lean mass is the primary driver for your metabolic rate. Therefore, you're increasing your lean mass or you're giving your body the the building blocks to help increase your lean mass obviously you have to apply a resistance training exercise to ensure that you're getting the most out of the protein that you're consuming but without the protein and just the exercise you're not as optimal as if you had the protein and the exercise so what this study is showing is not that intermittent fasting in isolation is better than calorie restriction. This study in particular, although we've seen studies where they just look at intermittent fasting versus, versus caloric restriction, and sometimes they're not significantly different, but still the fat loss is always in the intermittent fasting group over the caloric restriction group for the most part on those studies. But this one is showing significant differences, and it's really that protein axiom, adding that protein to your diet so doing an intermittent fasting diet using the spacing or the time frames that you have to space the, the the protein intake and ensuring that because of protein pacing your body is absorbing as much protein as possible on a daily basis therefore you give yourself even more of an edge even if you were just to increase your protein in a single setting so because of the way your body absorbs the protein overall throughout the day so spacing it just allows your body that that possibility of absorbing more of the total protein that you'll be intaking throughout the day so this is a really cool study obviously there is limitations to this study one major limitation is the amount of participants right only about 40 participants were in here um, we need a lot more and a lot more studies looking into this however this is in line with our understanding of what protein does in in assistance to weight loss as a whole so this does seem correct in terms of what what we've experienced in previous studies uh, when it comes to increasing your protein intake even when calories are equated for. Uh, so this is a really good, powerful tool showing one, intermittent fasting is still incredibly viable, uh, even though people have tried to sh uh, like shoo intermittent fasting away over the last few years. This still shows that intermittent fasting is still a very powerful tool, even if you combine it with other tools like protein pacing. And I would love to see a protein pacing study with intermittent fasting, protein pacing, caloric restriction, protein pacing, but one obviously being the fasting group versus one just being the caloric restriction group. This one didn't equate for protein on both ends. It did equate for calorie consumption and even calorie uh, uh, um, 
expenditure, but it didn't include, but it didn't equate for protein pacing. I'm very curious to see, even if it's not a significant difference in terms of weight loss, abdominal fat loss, visceral fat loss, I am curious to see what the differences would be uh, between them. Cause I look at the exact numbers, right? There, there might be studies that come out and say, you know, there isn't a significant difference, but a significant difference, which means it's not a P value, uh, below 0 0.05 to hit that statistical significance number. But, but when you look at the actual numbers in terms of the, the weight loss between the groups, it always tends to be that the intermittent fasting group loses more abdominal fat or loses more weight, uh, loses more visceral fat than the caloric restriction restriction group, even when everything is equated for. So I am very interested to see that. However, this study as a whole does perpetuate the same talking points that we've done here, even before these studies were like super rampant in terms of protein intake and its importance. We've been saying that in this uh, channel, especially when a lot of people would, you know, give a lot of kickback on like, no, increase your fats, increase your fats, do the ketogenic diet, which is fine in its own right. But I've always said that protein Increasing your protein is the most important macronutrient that you can increase, not just for the muscle building and for, you know, the, the, the properties that it has in terms of, you know, fixing things in your body, but the weight loss properties that it brings with it as well. Um, it is very conducive to enhancing and optimizing your weight loss and making it as fast as possible so hopefully this video has helped you guys uh we're going to continue to do videos here on fledge fitness uh let me know what you guys want me to do videos on down below we have over like i'm not even sure maybe 600 videos already on this channel on weight loss specifically so and we look at studies we do all these different things so if you if this is something that you guys enjoy and you want to get the latest understanding of the most important studies as we kind of whittle through all the, the the stuff that don't really matter that's that's the thing that we do here in uh on this channel we know how to find these studies and we know how to find the ones that are actually important because it it depends how these uh, the methodology of the study where you know if it's not randomized control meta-analysis is better than just a single individual study the you know statistical data out of that extrapolating data from meta-analysis and looking at different studies that have importance in moving the 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 information forward we we are really good at finding those specific studies to kind of not muddy the waters and get right to what's important for your weight loss and for the understanding biologically of what's the most optimal thing that you could do for weight loss. So if you guys enjoy that, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. So once we go live, once we post the video, you'll be, uh, you'll be made aware. And then you can go ahead and click and watch it until the next one, guys. Thank you very much for joining and we'll see you in the next video.